Hey guys, welcome back to the MSR Workshop. So, as promised, we are going to do a project on this Monport K40 laser that I am being sponsored to do. So, I think you guys are going to really like this video, so stick around. video we are going to do first off we are going to do a ramp test of the lens height because in a previous video we had upgraded to an air assist with a new lens and a new nozzle well what that did is it effectively changed our focal distance so the distance from our nozzle to our bed is going to change and the reason we want to do that is because a laser has a specific focal point that you want to stick to so it's very it's like almost like a triangle. There's a point and then as it gets farther away from your workpiece it's going to start to flare out and give you a really wide line. Now sometimes that wide line can be desirable but other times you definitely don't want it especially when you're cutting or you're doing small lettering um, where you just really want a crisp clean fine line. So today we are going to figure out what the appropriate focal length is for this new laser head and lens and then we're going to move on to the next part of our project so stick around. So how we're going to figure this focal distance for this laser at is first off I'm going to go ahead and take my bed out that I've got in here and this is the honeycomb bed with the scissor jack that I got installed. So we'll just take that out and next we are going to go ahead and take a piece of wood and we're going to set it at an angle. So the appropriate angle that I'm going to find is I'm going to do it where I can get it as close to the top of this nozzle as possible and have this piece of wood at an angle. And I'm going to draw a line this way. And so the idea of this as as the laser head moves out here, it'll obviously start out wide here, find the sweet spot where we'll get to the finest point, and then it'll start to get wider as it moves away. So I'm going to stop the video really quick. I'm going to find something to prop this up in here so it stays put and then we'll get to cutting. Okay, so we've got our board set up. I just used a piece of styrofoam, got it basically touching the bottom of this air nozzle here. And I also drew a line on light burn that's going to go this way. And I clicked my home button for the start of my cut. So I know that I'm going to line it up right here and it's just going to cut across this way. So let's go over to Lightburn and show you what I did really quick. So here's our Lightburn screen. And what I've done is I just drew a line. If you can see that, it's not a very big, it's just a straight line. And then I use this guy here, which wherever I click on this screen, it's going to home my laser to. So I just clicked on the beginning of this and it homed to the beginning of this line. So I know that I can line my piece of wood right underneath this and get ready to cut. So let's set up our cut settings. So I want to go first off and I want to set this to line. I don't want it to fill. So we're going to click on this, set it to line. And I don't need much power at all. Uh, let's do, let's say 100 millimeters a second. And it's probably too much, but we'll go ahead and try it at 15% power. And that'll give us a nice, good dark line it's going to be pretty quick so I don't necessarily need air assist so hit OK and if I hit start that will get it to start okay so let's go over to light burn here and hit start so as you can see it made a nice dark little line let's give that a little bit more power just to see if it makes a difference and I'm going to move my line just a little bit just so they're not on top of each other so let's go to 20% and hit start so 
So there you can really see the dramatic change with the distance of the laser. So let's take this off and take a look at where our focal point should be. So we measured from the top of this and it looks like somewhere right in here is going to be the ideal focal range. And so it looks like you do have a little bit of wiggle room in there where you still have a nice crisp line before you start to flare out. So let me show you what we're going to do next, how to figure the proper distance. Now I kind of marked right here, seems to be the finest line on both of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the laser and scoot it in the bed sideways right where it's touching again like we had before. And then just take something sharp and mark right on the side right here. And then also mark where the laser head comes on this and then just go ahead and measure that gap there. And so with my digital calipers, I came out to right at about 13 millimeters is the gap from the bottom of this head to where it seems to be that our focal distance is here marked on the side with this piece touching like we had before. So let's go ahead and make a box on light burn with a 13 millimeter width and then just make something that we can hang on a keychain so we can reset our focal distance every time we put a different size piece of wood in there. So I've gone and drawn a little box on light burn, but we need to set the height correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch in 13 millimeters up in this box. This hole here is something so we can hang in on something. And let's just make that a little bit shorter. Let's go ahead and make that 30. Well, let's make it longer. Let's try 50. That looks a little better. Drag that back in there. So now let's go ahead and set up our power. So power, I'm gonna try it uh, at about 20% at 10 millimeters a second. We'll see if that cuts through. And then we'll kind of go ahead and guesstimate the height with our calipers, and then once we have this cut, then we'll be able to dial it in exact. Okay, let's try five millimeters a second at 30% power. And this is about five millimeter plywood here. So we got through that really good. I probably could have dialed down the power a little bit. Never actually cut through this type of wood before. But just for fun, let's see how we did on our height. And that is pretty darn perfect. So about 13 millimeters from our bed seems to be pretty good. Now let's really quick try some really small lettering just to see how that ends up looking.
So let's take a look at see what we did. So my error assist, of course, blew my letters clear through. There's one that I was able to save, see if you guys can see it. And if I got my settings dialed in a little bit better, it would probably not char that as much. But that is pretty thin and fragile. But it cut it out. All right, next we are going to make some bed hold downs for a honeycomb bed. These little wedges that go in between the grates on a honeycomb and this helps hold your projects down. I feel like this is an essential piece of kit that you really need for your laser. They're easy to make. You can buy the file off of Etsy and the really low profile is the big thing. So if you buy a magnet or something that has a little handle on it, sometimes those are a little bit taller or I've seen people 3D print little wedges that hold stuff down. Sometimes those are a little bit tall and your laser nozzle can hit those and then it throws your alignment off. So we're gonna go ahead and build some of these out of acrylic and see how they work. So these are the bed hold downs that we're gonna make. This is a test file for a small, medium, large, and an extra large all in one cut so you can actually see which is gonna fit your bed the best. Next, we're gonna go over here to my art library. Nope, sorry, my cut library. And this is three mils, we're gonna say it's 3.17. The recommended cut settings for this are nine, on the speed, 25% power. I probably could do it with less power, but they say actually a little bit more power in acrylic, you get a smoother line. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave the power and speed settings the way they are and see how it does. So line, nine millimeters a second, 25% power, and let's get to cutting. Now let's see if we cut through these. Oh, interesting. We did not cut through. That's surprising. I was expecting them to cut through. Okay. So, well, we get to try this again. And just looking at these, I'm gonna guess that my small is gonna fit the honeycomb on my bed the best. So instead of cutting another test, let's go ahead and cut the small because I think that one's going to work the best. And we need to raise our bed because we forgot to raise our bed too. A few moments later. One more cut off camera. Just slowed my speed down a little bit and these are dropping out just like expected. These should work just fine for my hold downs. All right, so the next part of this build project is we are gonna be making a greeting card. Now, I know there's other ways to make greeting cards out there. If anybody has used one of the Cricut or Silhouette uh, cutters, those use actually a little blade. And I have one of those. Sometimes it's a little finicky to set up, but we're gonna try our hand at a laser. Laser. Now the file that I bought off of Etsy is a happy birthday card, and I will leave a link where you can get this if it turns out good. But we are gonna start off with a white piece of paper, and our settings are gonna be 130 millimeters a second, and we're gonna be about 17% power on this. So let's see how this guy turns out. So the first part about setting this up in the light burn is obviously getting your project. 
Now, this is a file that I picked up off of Etsy, and it's going to come looking something similar to this. Now, it may be all black, and in which case you would highlight the whole project, you would right click, and you would come down here to, you'll have an option that says trace image, and then it will give you an actual cut line of this whole image. So let's zoom in on here first. So this is going to be our whole project. It's going to say happy birthday. Now, if you wanted to, you could take the happy birthday out and type your own greeting in here. Say happy Valentine's Day, thank you, get well soon, or whatever you want. Um, we're just going to leave this happy birthday because that's the way it came. And we are going to do one thing to this. Now, one thing you see here is there are two different colors for our cut. There is a black outline and a blue inner line. The reason I have this both separated, they're both cuts, is that I want it to do the inside of this card first. And then it's gonna cut this outer line. Now, we're not gonna cut this all at once. We're actually gonna cut this as a separate piece and then use this as the square for the actual folded edges of our card. The reason I don't wanna do this all in one piece is because once you've got this whole blue section cut out, it actually becomes very delicate and it's really hard to make a perforated line right along here. Now, I don't have a tools to actually make little perforations here to make it easier to fold. So the way around that is we're gonna go ahead and create a square. So I'm gonna start, actually let's start right here and we're gonna go all the way to the edge here and you'll see it turn to a little cross here and that means that we've snapped to the corner there. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull this up here until we've reached the corner and then I'm gonna move this in just a little bit. So my margin here and here is gonna be the same. So when I fold this card in half, I'll have a nice little white border on all four sides. The next part we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this black line and we are going to cut. So I've removed that black line. That is gonna be the second part of this card. So now let's go ahead and get our power set up. So I am actually going to cut this at 110 millimeters a second and we'll go ahead and say at 17.5 percent power and I'll go ahead and hit OK and now we're going to go ahead and move over to the laser.
So let's see how that turned out. There we have the top of our card. Now let's go ahead and put the bottom half in and cut that outline out. And so that part that we cut off before we started this job, we'll just paste it back on so it'll be the exact size to lay this over the top. So all I'm going to do is drop that next piece in there, delete this one off of my screen, which was the one I just did, frame that out. And we need to move it over just a little bit. Let's try that again. So it's, now it's time for our assembly. We got our square cut out. This will be right on top right there. So we're going to fold our card that's underneath in half. is going to go right on top right there. So the way to do that is I have some Weldwood multi-purpose spray adhesive that works really good for attaching stuff like that. We are in luck. sticky stuff so try not to get this on your fingers too much and there you have it a happy birthday greeting card ready to go Alright guys, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think we got a lot accomplished. We adjusted our focal distance to our honeycomb bed with our new air assist and we made some honeycomb bed hold downs out of acrylic that should work great for holding projects down to keep them from moving. And we made this little greeting card. So if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for my next video, be sure and leave them below. And if you want to purchase a laser like this or one even larger, you can go to Monport's website and I have a 6% off discount code. That 6% off discount code will get you 6% off a laser like this or even one larger or any of the equipment that they carry. But if you like the video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you and stay tuned for my next video. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.